Good morning, YTPC. Philly Piper Mike here. Friday, July 2nd. <clears throat> 70 degrees. Uh, overcast. Rainy. Has been raining. Um, real quick, before I get going, I wanted to just show you guys this cutting board setup that I got from Jason Ziner. Uh, Jason Ziner Pipes. So it's zebra wood. It's a beautiful block. It says say, it says uh, JZP right there, Jason Ziner Pipes. It's got a little like concave cutout. It's got a beautiful ulu. I, th I think that's what it's called. Um, as you can see, zebra wood handle. It's got a nice sharp edge right there so when you put your block on it and you just your plug come down on it it cuts it really nice it's got a little stand um, really super awesome I mean a hundred bucks I mean you can't beat that I think it was even a hundred bucks shipped um, I did order a, a pipe from him as well which I think I'm gonna Order, I ordered it kind of thinking I'm going to do it in a giveaway whenever I hit maybe like 500 subscribers or something. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to give a shout out to Jay, um, Jason. Really awesome. It really makes cutting plugs uh, enjoyable. Um, you know, it, so something I can definitely recommend. The other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to thank my buddy Steve Oster. Um, just a great, great guy. He sent me this awesome book. Um, him and I have gone back and forth about, you know, he's a he's a veteran. His family had a lot of veterans in it. I'm very thankful uh, of veterans, and I really love anything military related. Um, but you know, he uh, he sent me this. It was a surprise and um, an awesome. An awesome uh, a note. Um, I won't read it just because I don't know um, if you would like me to read it, but it's just a very heartfelt, sincere note, and I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, Steve. This is awesome. I can't wait to read it. Um, I don't know if you can be able to see it if it's backwards or not, but it's um, the battle that changed Iadrang, Iadrang, the battle that changed the Vietnam War. We were soldiers once and young. Lieutenant General Harold G. Moore retired and Joseph Galloway. Um, yeah, just uh, awesome gift. Can't wait. So with that, <clears throat> we'll get back into the normal, normal ride, normal review. Just wanted to get those two things. I've been meaning to do the uh, the cutting board, and uh, and then I got that in the mail by surprise yesterday, which is uh, awesome. So Stevie, thank you so much, man. I uh, I really appreciate that. It was a great surprise. Even my wife was like, "Oh, I want to read that book too." So um, she loves that kind of stuff too. So anyway, today I am smoking my Radice rind. Bent billiard. It's that red red stain they have with a white acrylic stem, the two dots, smooth finish, smooth rim. Need to get more bent radiches. Although I say, as I'm saying, I need to get the Canadian one too. But I have a. Uh, I have this, and I have a hawk bill. And the hawk bill, I really only uh, use for Lakelands, so I don't really use it a lot. But in this for DJ today, I am smoking. Eric Stokeby's fourth generation 1855 flake. <coughs> um, 
I believe this is the first or the the in the chronological order <clears throat> um, of the tobaccos he released. This one is in honor of his great grandfather uh, Eric Peter Stokeby, who is the man who started the tobacco company. But his um. He was born in 1855, hence the, the name of the blend. And from what the description of the tin says is that he was a um, you know, big fan of naturally flavored tobaccos, or just natural tobaccos with no flavoring or casing. Top note. Topping, I should say. And this is a really good. I, I haven't smoked this in probably a couple years. Um, I've had it in a jar. Like I said, I, you know, again, as usual, so many tobaccos, you kind of forget about ones. Um, and I'd gotten all these fourth generations all at the same time, like I was saying. So I was like, oh, got to try this, got to try this, got to try this. And then, you know, back when I got all these, I was in the throes of my tobacco acquisition disorder this is like a straight Virginia it, it, I know a lot of people say it tastes very similar to McBaron's Virginia number one and I see that I get the comparisons the cut looks very similar it's a broken flake a little bit on the chunkier side um, you definitely get honey and bread and citrus. It's a really good bright Virginia, golden Virginia. It's in that capstan gold. Um, you know, Virginia number one. Um, I would even say Rainier, uh, what's it, 71? Long golden flake. That's in that same same vein. Which is <clears throat> what I really enjoy. I love a good straight Virginia man. You know what kind of also tastes like this? Obviously it's not a vapor, but Alright, these aren't vapors, but the London Flake from Peretti just has that real sweetness. You know, for a Virginia Perique, that's that tastes very similar to these, you know, lemon, honey, citrus Virginias. I enjoy this. This is really good. And again, it's got a it's got a little age on it, it's got a few years, nothing crazy. Actually, I have, I think the tin of this that I have is, maybe it's the, the tin from uh, Eric's birth date. He, like, signed for me, and then I have, like, a, a fourth-generation tobacco, like, metal sign that he signed. And again, I've heard some people say the same thing that they say about um, Virginia number one. That if you smoke it too fast, it'll bite you. Again, I don't think I've ever been bit from a Virginia. I think the only thing I might have ever been bit from is like a heavily topped aromatic. But I'm also not a big fast puffer. I know a lot of you new guys starting out. I remember when I first started smoking a pipe, my main concern was, you know, keeping it lit. And I had to, oh man, I had to puff it and puff it to keep it lit. And if there 
there's one thing that one piece of advice that I could give to, to newer pipe smokers is that you don't have to do that. You know, you you don't have to keep. You'd be amazed once you get a good cherry going and a, and the pipe's lit. How long it'll stay lit without even taking a, a draw off it. Obviously, it depends on the blend and you know the moisture content, but. I think I, I dismissed so many so many good blends in the, in the beginning because I was puffing them so fast, just trying to just the only thing I was focusing on was keeping that bowl lit, you know, and it just completely roasts the tobacco to where it just tastes like hot hot ash, you know, especially if it's a lighter blend like this that's you know got nuance. You know, the slower you smoke it. Or you can pull out those those really light and, and uh, amazing flavors. And it, you know, it takes time. I get it. You know, it's one of those things that you just learn from experience. That you know, hey, that pipe will stay lit. You know, I remember the first time I I was smoking a pipe and. I did something, or I, I put it down, and I went inside, or did something, and had to go to the bathroom, whatever it was, and I came back out a few minutes later, you know, just thinking it was going to be out, and I'm like, oh, it's still lit, I'm like, ah, like a light bulb triggered, like, oh, I don't have to, like, you know, it's not like smoking a cigarette, where you got to just constantly puff on that thing, not that a cigarette will go out, because there's so many crappy chemicals in that thing. You could light it and just leave it there and it'll just burn all the way down. That was the one good thing I was able to, you know, I was a heavy cigarette smoker for a lot of years. Probably 20 years, I guess. Um, and I was able to, to quit smoking cigarettes. It's been a couple years now, at least. You know, I smoked a pipe and smoked cigarettes, but I don't miss them at all. To anybody that's a cigarette smoker, you know, give it a go. Try to try to quit with pipe. You know, you, in the morning I would my pipe's better with coffee. It's better after a meal. You know, in the beginning I was smoking. God, I would bring like three or four pipes to work just because I was so used to constantly smoking cigarettes, like like a freight train. That I I. Uh, In the beginning, I, you know, I needed, I smoked a lot of pipes because every time I had that urge, they're like, oh, I need a cigarette. I would light a pipe. After a while, that goes away, and after your, you know, your desire to want to have to smoke a cigarette dwindles, it, um, you know, now I smoke a few pipes a day. You know, three, four. Throughout the whole day, is I would smoke, you know, three or four pipes at work. So, anyway, I'm kind of rambling. So yeah, it's going to be a nice three-day weekend. Uh, I'm excited about that. Fourth, the fourth is on Sunday, but we're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm shutting down the shop on Monday to observe Independence Day. Look, you know, give give myself and the guys a break. Um, my manager may be having, so his wife's due for a C-section with her second child on the 16th. He texted me this morning like, hey, I'm, I'm headed into work, but, you know, today might be the day. She's got some cramping, maybe some contractions. So who knows? That's a possibility. But if not, at least we get a nice long weekend. We got an archery lesson, as usual. And I'm thinking, I'm hoping maybe I'll do a, uh, a 3D shoot if the weather holds up at one of the local uh, archery clubs. And then do something on Monday, because I think Monday's supposed to be nice, maybe. Sunday's supposed to be nice, too, I think. Um... 
do something with the girls and the kids and the boys. But anywho, um, just here at work. Just up here. guys have a great day have a great weekend have a great holiday uh, I won't be posting a video on Monday because I'll be off so we'll pick back up on Tuesday you guys have a have a great great day great weekend I'll see you guys on the next one remember the left lane is for passing take care guys see ya